Some of you may be confused as to why Ouija Play's video on the Blue Yeti is a big deal, so let me break it down for you. I'm here to tell you the Blue Yeti is a $100 stainless steel toy. The Blue Yeti is a $100 stainless steel toy. Everything good you heard about it, forget it. They're lies born from hobbyists with no concept of quality. Everything good you heard about it, forget it. They're lies born from hobbyists with no concept of quality. This goes for all USB mics, not just the Yeti. All USB microphones are very, very bad. Oh, but what about- Well, actually- There's four main components to your basic online recording setup. There are four different key components to producing quality sound. The thing everyone double takes on is the audio interface. I know that everyone is probably scratching their heads at what exactly these things are. Your recording environment. The recording environment. If your microphone's in the proximity of an AC unit, heating vent, fan, noisy computer fan, TV in the background, people talking in the other room, or construction outside- You got any background noise? Fans, computer, air conditioner, heater, lawn work, construction, mom yelling at you to do your homework? Take care of it. Go handle it. A prime place to put them would be in the ceiling corners, because that's where a lot of echoes get trapped and multiply. Make sure to pay extra attention to covering any and all corners, because that's where sound waves like to bounce around and amplify. Having carpet really helps too. Also, if you don't have a carpet floor, you're really gonna want a carpet floor. You see a mic on stage or in studio? Chances are it's an XLR. Virtually every mic you will ever see in a studio or on a stage is an XLR mic. Microphone. Some stuff to go over before we get into our list. I need to explain to you the three types of mics we'll be talking about, as well as introducing you to preamps. I'll just be going over the three most commonly used types, dynamics, condensers, and ribbons. Condenser microphones. These have a good sensitivity leading to a more detailed sound. Condenser microphones are very well balanced in terms of sensitivity, which generally results in a much more detailed sound. The majority of the character acting you hear in cartoons and video games is done on condenser microphones. Making them the go-to mics for studio settings and applications such as voiceover work and character acting. The second, dynamic microphones. Dynamic microphones. These are less sensitive. They're the least sensitive. A lot more durable. Built to be durable. And see frequent use for stage. Find frequent use in stage broadcast. Broadcast and narration settings. The narration environments. They also tend to be cheaper. Tend to be on the cheaper side. And third would be ribbon microphones. When you think of a classic warm sounding recording, you're probably thinking of a ribbon. Ribbon microphones provide much warmer, classic sounding recordings. Some recording engineers find it to be by far the best sounding of the three. And a lot of audio engineers swear by them as hands down the best microphones. So why am I even talking about the other two? So why not just get one of these? Ribbon mic drawbacks would include weak durability compared to the other types. As in, if you blow or get spit in the mic, you might damage it. Well, aside from being extremely delicate and susceptible to things like bumping, blowing, and spit, they're also not a very economic choice because a good ribbon mic that works on a wide variety of voices is going to run you at least a thousand bucks. They're definitely not the most affordable affordable option, with good ribbon mics hovering around the one to two thousand dollar price range. Now what's a preamp? A preamp, again to make a long description very short, it's a piece of hardware you run your mic through that boosts the input but in a proficient way, that boosts the input of your microphone in a proficient way, leading to a lower noise floor and a more defined sound, resulting in a lower noise floor and a much cleaner sound. Any piece of equipment you run your mic through will color the audio in some way. They all colorize audio in their own unique ways. If you want to get a really cheap one just to try it out, go for the Art Tube MPV3. The Art Tube MPV3, PreSonus 2, PreV2, and Cloudlifter CL1 are the best options when going for something cheaper. I already mentioned one of these in the first part. Here we've got a few microphones in the one to $200 price range. Also, a lot of people just getting into this think USB mics are the only thing Blue puts out, but they actually have a good line of XLR condensers and you'll be seeing a couple more on this list. Believe it or not, Blue actually makes more than just the Snowball and the Yeti. They've also got some really good XLRs as well. Audio-Technica has a ton of mics between these two. Audio-Technica has a ton of mics in between this and the 2020, but the 4033 is the first product on the price ladder that gives a significant boost in Quality. But the 4033 is the first one with a significant boost in quality. Your voice might sound good on a mic that's 300, but not as good on a mic that's 1000. Person 1 might sound great on setup A, but bad on setup B. Doesn't mean that mic's overpriced. Doesn't mean one of those setups is necessarily worse or overpriced. It means that out of 6 billion people, some of us are bound to sound differently. And with over 7 billion different voices in the world, it mainly boils down to what works best for you. If you still don't get why all these so-called references are plagiarism, 
understand that plagiarism is to steal and pass off the ideas or words of another as one's own, or to use another's production without crediting the source. Soul Brother's name isn't mentioned in Ouija's video at all, nor are any of the people he collaborated with in his series, which is important because if the video gets linked around, it looks like Ouija wrote the whole thing himself. So ripping off a video and disingenuously calling it a reference, then putting that reference in your video description well below the fold is worthless. No one reads video descriptions anyway. This is compounded by the fact that Ouija did not contact Soul Brother before his video went online. Soul Brother was alerted to Ouija's vid by a fan on Twitter after it was uploaded. After some time, Ouija finally admitted to this, but he was forced to because Soul Brother publicly stated that he wasn't contacted. Why is all of this a problem? The purpose of Ouija's video isn't to help educate people people like Soul Brother set out to do. It's to make money from someone else's work by pretending to be an authority. Ouija doesn't care about his video being misleading or false, otherwise he'd fix the errors in it. Errors like, the Yeti's audio quality is misrepresented. My name's Ouija the God and I spend 14 hours a day watching Family Guy Funny Moments. Anyone with any experience with the Yeti could tell you that Ouija has his setup incorrectly. A properly set up Yeti does not have that buzzing sound. Even if you have a buzzing sound or a background noise in your recording, there are free programs that you can use to remove it and improve the audio quality for both live streams and recordings. For example, here's Ouija's original Yeti recording. My name's Ouija the God and I spend 14 hours a day watching Family Guy Funny Moments. Now here it is after I ran it through Audacity. My name's Ouija the God and I spend 14 hours a day watching Family Guy Funny Moments. My name's Ouija the God, and I spend 14 hours a day watching Family Guy Funny Moments. Ouija compares the audio quality of a Yeti to a Shure SM7B, Cloudlifter CL1, and Scarlet 2i4. That's a $60 to $100 USB mic compared to $750 of equipment. The video contradicts itself. Ouija says that the Blue Yeti sucks and no one should buy it, but also says, With over 7 billion different voices in the world, it mainly boils down to what works best for you. If all this boils down to personal preference and necessity, then why shame people for using a Yeti when it's perfectly fine? While talking about USB mics, footage is shown from TechSource that displays the Florian BM800 and newer NW800. These are not USB mics, you can clearly see their XLR outputs. There's no mention in this video that some XLR mics require phantom power, something you should absolutely know if you're buying new equipment. Now, Ouija himself has acknowledged problems with his video, a list of which he put in his video's description. But as I said before, that's worthless. What would actually help is if he corrected it by removing the errors and telling people his video's essentially Soul Brothers, but he probably won't do that. Here's the thing, Ouija's video is just a symptom of a larger issue. Regurgitating information to make a quick buck online, an internet marketer's manifesto that has seeped its way into YouTube content over the years, has become popularized through rehashed clickbait videos like Ouija's. And it's only getting worse. Why? Because it's effective. Soul Brothers' video leaned on research from industry professionals that was gathered over years and strived for accuracy. Ouija simply copied it poorly while missing the point. Which of these do you think required more effort? Now consider that Ouija's video gained more views in a week than Soul Brothers has over two years. If we don't put our foot down and try to stem the flow of this disingenuous garbage, it'll only continue to get worse. We need to call this bullshit out and make sure everyone acknowledges those who are stolen from, people like Soul Brother who actually care about knowing their craft. We can't keep encouraging the fake authority marketing of thieves. If we do, we'll be inundated with even more misleading and inaccurate information, which is the absolute last thing we need these days. Oh, by the way, I recorded this entire video on Yeti.